Russell's account of knowledge relies crucially on this idea that uh, the universals are something real <clears throat> and they're not physical and uh, since they're real he wants to make judgments about you know, physical things about the real world well, they can't be just merely mental either they have to be neither physical nor mental a really important question with this given that Russell says that all knowledge begins with acquaintance is how we can be acquainted with these you know, universals that are neither physical nor mental in this section, he tries to get an account of how we can become acquainted with universals. <clears throat> and uh, you know, the answer, basically, is that you know, first you become acquainted with the particular things, and then from that you have this process, you, you, you go through this kind of abstraction, you see the similarity between these things, and this gets the whole, the whole ball rolling, where uh, you can become acquainted with universals by seeing how particulars are similar to each other. Probably the easiest way to begin with this notion of, uh, re uh, of how we get the universals from particular is to start with uh, particular things that are pretty much exactly similar to each other. So, what Russell points out is that we, we look at particular things, right? And you look at each of these leaves. Each of these leaves is bear a strong resemblance to each other. They're very close in description to each other. You know, the big difference is that perhaps the location on the stem, right? but they have a very similar shape. They have uh, pretty much the same colors. They uh, have the same structure when you look at the veins of the leaves. So each of these are particular leaves, but they have a relation of resemblance to each other. This one resembles this one, this one resembles this one, this one resembles this one, and so on and so forth. I, in fact, you know, we, we would look at this resemblance and we would say that um, they have, you know, that they are the same kind of thing because of that resemblance. So it starts here, right? We, we can start here with this, with this very, very strong similarity. In fact, that they, they are almost exactly similar to each other. And in, in having that exact similarity, we say it's of the same kind. Well, that's similarity, right? And that, that helps us out a lot. So you notice here is that same leaf that we saw, you know, that, that we just saw, okay? And you know, each of these leaves are similar to each other. Now each of these leaves are similar to, to each of those of the same kind, right? So this, there's a similarity here, and there's a similarity here. But notice, these leaves ha have a dissimilarity to these leaves. The structure is different. You got two different colors in these leaves here. Uh, even you know, these are on a single stem and you got five of them coming off a single stem where you get a lot you, you get a different structure right there the uh, structure inside the leaf with the veins it's something that's something that's got a dis dissimilarity between these two as well so what we have is we have similarity that's one way of uh, understanding these particulars but we also have dissimilarity now similarity and dissimilarity give us two very important things in, in logic, right? Is and is not. Hmm? This one is like this one. This one is like this one. Okay? So these are all of the same kind. Okay? This one is like that one. That one is like those. So these are the same kind. But this leaf is not like this leaf. These are not of the same kind. At least not right off the bat, right? There's an important dissimilarity between these two. Now, with similarity and dissimilarity, we get is and is not. And this is going to be the foundation of logic. And it starts with Aristotle, way back with the Greeks. His logic was based on this, of uh, being able to say that one op a subject is a predicate or is not a predicate. So we could have a universal, a predicate here, 
and we can have a universal and a predicate here given this similarity right? and we say this leaf is not like this leaf right? or is not this kind. This is how universals get us started with is and is not and get us started on the road to logic and then logic gives us everything else. Dealing with universals merely as exact similarity is not going to get us very far. Um, very few things are like those leaves that we looked at where they're exactly similar to each other. Uh, but there are other universals we could deal with. All right? So, you know, Russell gives examples of pulling universal from sensible qualities. All right, so here's what he's talking about. Let, let's, look at, um, let's look at this, these leaves right here. All right? They have a particular color. Look at this tree back here. It has a particular color. And then, you know, the switch sides, and then that tree right there. Okay. Now, now look at them, just compare them one issue to each other. Let's step out of frame a second. Compare them to each other. You notice that they're different colors, right? They, they don't, they, the colors aren't exactly the same, but there is a resemblance between the three of them. Now that resemblance is what we call green. Um, you see the resemblance uh, between the three of them, even though that resemblance is not contained in the sensible qualities. The sensible quality, that, that's the individual colors for each of these three. But the resemblance is something other than that. Now you don't need to infer that resemblance. That's something that you know happens automatically. You, you, you uh, grasp that resemblance right away. As near as I could tell, this is what Russell means by being acquainted with the universal. You have an immediate grasp of the resemblance between those three. So this way, uh, you are acquainted with the universal green, even though you've only seen three shades. But that's okay, right? You're, just, you're getting acquainted with what the three colors have in common, namely green. Now, sensible qualities like colors uh, are kind of an easy start. You know, kind of, it's easier to see resemblance in terms of, of color. And we do a lot of abstraction as far as this is concerned. We look at, you know, we look at the particulars and we abstract away universals. Right? We, uh, you know, like I say, the sensible qualities, that's one. We could, excuse me, color is one. We could also do light and dark, that, that'd be another. Uh, you could do examples, I mean I can't do it with the video of course, but we could do examples with uh, touch, smell, taste, so on and so forth. Even uh, what you hear. Okay. Um, uh, it's, it's really kind of interesting to me uh, that you know a C, a middle C, uh, is lower than a, than a high C, yet uh, there's still a similarity between the two and you know, that's one of the reasons why we had the musical scale. Sensible qualities are one thing. Well, what about space and time? Now, space, we can, at, you, again, you, the space is not contained in the sensible qualities. So, uh, you know, behind me, we have, have the water fountain, all right? And uh, what we could do is kind of impose, right? Here I have the sensible qualities in my hand, and they are, you know, you immediately grasp or apprehend that it's spatially speaking in front, uh, excuse me, in front of that fountain behind me. And you, you, do, do, you do do this automatically even though that's not contained in the sensible qualities. Now you might think, well, no, no, it's, it's contained in sight, right? The distance is contained in sight. Well, here's a small, short little proof that it's not, right? You immediately grasp that the fountain is behind my hand. And yet, uh, on your computer screen, it's the same distance. 
the, my hand is not closer to you than the fountain from you know, on the computer screen. All the pixels are the same distance from your to your eyes, yet you immediately grasp the distance. So uh, distance is, is another one of these things that Russ is going to say. We uh, we are acquainted with you know with particular things. We're acquainted with the particular, but from that we abstract the universal. From that we abstract the universal. With you know, so, so that's that's space, right? Well, with space we can very quickly get greater than and less than. The distance from the camera to my hand is less than the distance from my camera to the fountain. Greater than or less than. That comes, you know, that, that, that happens pretty quickly. As far as time, well, I started, you know, I just began speaking, you know, more than a few seconds ago. The, the progression of time has passed, and you grasp that, even though that's not contained in the sensible qualities. It's not contained in the sensible qualities. Uh, you know, if you want some further proof, it's not contained in the sensible qualities. You know, take a look at the little timer down at the bottom of your screen for this video. Now, the, the certain amount of time has passed. You probably don't, don't know what it is just by looking at the sensible qualities. You have to look at that timer. Yet, you still grasp before and after. You still grasp before and after. All right. And you can do similar um, abstraction in terms of greater than and less than with time as well. You know, the amount of time that has passed between now and now is less than the amount of time that's passed between the second now and when I first spoke in, in this scene. That's greater than and less than. We don't encounter the universals in everyday life. We don't see them or hear them. Right? We, we see and hear what we have are our experiences. That's what, we, that's what we see and hear. But we abstract away the universal from those particulars. We immediately grasp that universal. And it's in that way that we're acquainted with that universal. We abstract from the particulars. We abstract from the particulars, uh, from the particular sense data. And when that, that abstraction is immediate, it's immediately present to our mind, and it's in this way that we grasp the universals, that we're acquainted with the universals. Universals are not, um, are not given in the sensible qualities. Particular instances are, okay. And those, from those particular instances, we abstract away, but the abstract itself is not in the particular instance. The abstract is what, the universe is what the particulars have in common, but it's not contained in any one particular, particular. <laughs> All right, so what do we get from this? Well, with, uh, with these uh, universals very quickly, we get is and is not. Right? We get a universal for sensible qualities, and that's great, that's a great start. And uh, from that, you can get such things as shape. Shape isn't hard. Shape is uh, actually pretty straightforward. With given shapes of things, we, we, we abstract away the resemblance and shape from particular things, and then we start identifying those shapes with the simplest, the triangle, to the square, and so on and so forth. Before long, we got geometry. With, uh, uh, also, with this resemblance and dissimilarity, we have is and is not, which is the foundation of all of logic. Logic uh, can give us mathematics really quickly. If you don't like logic for mathematics, well, we can, uh, you know, we can start with shape, right? And you start counting the sides. And uh, with counting the sides, you have mathematics really quickly. You have greater than and less than. We saw that with space and time. Spa you know, greater than and less than also uh, will give us mathematics real fast. We would uh, not only abstract away uh, logic and mathematics, geometry, we abstract away cause and effect. Cause and effect is not seen. Right? There is no little light that shines every time one thing causes another. We abstract away cause and effect 
from these particular instances. Now, um, you know, with cause and effect, uh, it's not, and you put that together with logic, it's not hard uh, to get induction. Right? So pretty soon we've, you know, we've got the principle of inference, we've got the principle of induction. We have all of our universals. Now, you know, you know, getting a little ahead of myself, we have the universals, right? Now, putting them together for the judgments, like the principle of inference and the principle of induction, putting together for the judgments is, is another thing, right? Just uh, uh, acqu becoming acquainted with the universals is not yet truth, right? Green as a universal isn't something true or false. Green is a color, or um, most, if not all, leaves are green, all right? That would be a truth. Now, the... That deals with judgments. And right? we put the universes together to get judgments. Now, judgments are a different matter. You're not acquainted with judgments. In order to uh, determine whether your judgments are true or false, we need to talk about intuitive knowledge. And that's the next section.